I'm thrilled to be introducing um, the third and final part to this MathWorks series. Joining us from MathWorks is our longtime sponsor and friend, Juanel D'Souza. Um, also joining him today for the presentation is Alex, who is joining us from the RoboSub team um, from Team Sonia. And I'll let them introduce themselves as we get started and let you know what they'll be talking about. I'm going to stop my sharing so that you can see their faces as they introduce themselves. And then Alex, I think, has some slides that he'd like to share with you. Take it away, Connell and Alex. All righty. So uh, I'm going to be real brief, real, real brief today. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard from me a number of times in the past, but my name is Connell D'Souza. Um, I work at the MathWorks on the student programs team, and I've been, or my team has been supporting um, um, Robination competitions for a few years now. So I've been out to a few of them and uh, been a judge at a number of them before. Um, but I'm super excited to be here. I think, I think, well, I, I, I'd like to present the star of today's show, which is uh, who's Alexander uh, Alex, who I've been calling Alex for the last few few weeks. We, 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 we've been we've been working together on making on creating a video because because we we. we we met them at a competition. We learned about how they were using MATLAB. We thought it was a really cool and advanced workflow. Um, so we, 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 we've been working together on making a video that we're going to post on our website at some point. But I, I thought it would be, it'd be a good opportunity for him to come and talk to you all directly. Um, um, so, so yeah, so without wasting too much time, Alex, the floor is all yours. Please take it away. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah. so hi, my name is Alex Sound. So uh, <laughs> I recognize some people over there. Awesome. So uh, I... I'm a graduate student, so I used to be a uh, Sonia team member over the past four years. So over the year, I used to participate at RoboSub 2019 at Transdex, the two online competition for 2020 and 2021. And I was there also at the uh, RoboSub 2022 at the University of Maryland. But over the past two or three years, I used to work with a lot of the members on my team to develop you know, a control algorithm for AUVs using MathWorks and Simlink. And then today, we're going to show you the, uh, the result of what what we have done over the past uh, the past two or three years. So without losing too much time, I'll just go ahead and present the slides. Won't be long, sorry, because I'm on the uh, web browser right now, so I have to tap around. All right, so does everyone see the slide correctly? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. So looks good. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So as we say, the, the, the meeting of today, we're gonna to talk about designing an adaptive model predictive controller for an autonomous underwater vehicle using MATLAB and Simulink. Um, so what's the agenda for the next hour? So first of all, we're gonna start off with a demonstration of the pre-qualification task that we have uh, done for RoboSub last year. Uh, we'll briefly introduce our, our AUVs or our, our vehicle just for a bit of context. And then we'll just do a brief overview about the system dynamics, uh, the adaptive FPC controller, and how those we integrate those uh, features into our software architecture. We'll then show the workflow that we use when we are developing and debugging and testing our control algorithm. Uh, after this slide, we'll jump into MATLAB Simulink just to show uh, how, we use math, how we use MATLAB to uh, do to apply the control algorithm. So we're just gonna show how the, the controller system works. And at the end, we'll show another quick demonstration about the uh, style points that we have done last, uh, last year at RoboSub competition. And as always, we'll just finish up with some key takeaways. All right, so just a quick reminder of what the pre-qualification task uh, for people that are not into the RoboSub community. So at RoboSub, there is a way that you can get qualified directly to the semifinal if you are able to record your AUV uh, going through a gate, turn around a pole that is located 10 meters away, and then come back. And if you're able to send the video before the uh, the, 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 the time limit, uh, voila, you get pre-qualified. So we decide to use this task to uh, really uh, stress test our controller. So what we do is that we generate a trajectory that is way overkill for what is needed, but we 
but it is the task that we use to really find what is the limit of what the control is able to do in terms of uh, trajectory complexity. Uh, do you see like the office online frame in the middle of the slide? Kind of annoying, but I don't know if it's uh, something. Anyway, so what's our the, the key point that we have defined for this trajectory? It's first of all, we want a continuous motion so that the AUV doesn't stop for its entire trajectory. Uh, we really want to have, like we say, a complex a spline pattern. So we have uh, generate a spline circulate trajectory based on waypoints. So if you can see from the picture from the top to right, we see that we have you know, a sketch up of the trajectory that we want to apply. And then we just select some uh, waypoints on it and we use our trajectory generator to generate our full trajectory, which is like the images on the bottom right. And also what is cool about that trajectory is that we are actually moving four degrees of freedom at the same time. So as we are turning around the pole, we're actually moving in X and Y, uh, a little bit in Z because the AUV will get a little bit awkward uh, at the time and turn. And since we want the AUV to be tangent to the trajectory, it will also move into yeah, so four degree of freedom at the same time. So here we get a little video. I just update the link over there. So um, the pre-qualification, we just speed the video four times because it took like a minute uh, 45 to execute it. So we, we don't, don't want to uh, waste a lot of time. So there's a, a speed up. So again, four times the, the, the full speed. So as we can see, we are moving in straight lines. And as it goes, we see we start uh, turning around the pole. Like that. So as you can see, even if the AUV gets a little bit slower, it doesn't stop for its entire trajectory. And it just go ahead and go back into the gate. So that this is the, the video that we sent to RoboSub last year to, to, to get pre-qualified. All right, so what, what is the system that we want to control today? So Sonia has two active prototypes that both participated in RoboSup last year. So we start from the right, so the, the, the black one, this is our seventh prototype. So it is running from uh, since 2016. So it's kind of old uh, right now, but we're still using it. And on the right, this is our latest prototype running since 2020. Uh, even though if they look uh, completely different, uh, model-wise, they're pretty much the same. So for example, they both have the same thruster configuration, so they both have a thruster oriented in the same way. Uh, they both have sensors that measure the, ex the exact uh, same uh, state. And they also share the same symmetry properties. So as we can see from the image from the right, uh, I can draw a vertical line and a horizontal line uh, that cross in the middle of the AUV. And we can see that the, the both of the server are fully symmetrical. So this is useful because we it can simplify the equation of motion that we will see later on. So basically what we want to do uh, with our controller is we want to be able to design one controller that will run on both sub. And the only thing that we want to change between of the AUV are the you know the parameter. So again, we want the same code running on both vehicle, but just changing the parameters of each AUV. All right. So right now, I just want to talk a little bit about vehicle dynamics. I know there are equation on the on the screen, but this is just uh, for showing. I won't get into deeper. So one of the main reasons we want to discuss about a, a system model is because well, since model predictive control use prediction, uh, it's based on prediction actually, uh, we will want to focus to get a precise model because the accuracy of the prediction model will directly affect the performance of the feedback system. So for our type of application, what we wanted to do is we really want to be able to control the six degree of freedom of the vehicle. So this is why we're going to use a, you know, a six DOF model. And we decide to go with a 13 state model state. So as we can see, what are the state that we want to control? So first we have the, the position in X, Y, Z, uh, regardless of an inertial reference frame. So in our case, we use the net. So I got the little frame here. So north, X, east, Y, and down for Z. Uh, we decide to use a quaternion to express the attitude of the UV. Uh, the main reason for that is that we want to be, to get rid of all the singularity especially when we do all those crazy uh, style points. And then we got the six velocities for each, uh, for each uh, degrees of freedom. So on the top level, there's two main uh, equations to the system model. So the first one is dynamic equation. So basically what that does is, you know, it, it predicts the behavior of the system based on the trust input that we send. 
So what's hard about that equation, it's not the equation itself, but it's to define these, all this, the, uh, the mechanical properties of the system. And for us, Tonya, the hardest or the most challenging parameters to find was the drag constant of the vehicle. So as we can see from the picture on the, on the right, we, we see that we do a numerical analysis of the, the water of the flow running around the vehicle. So in a case you want to do a velocity controller, you only need that equation. But since in our case, we want to have a position controller, we want to add a kinematic equation. And what this will add to the system model is that it will be able to track the position of the AUV into the reference frame. And as you can notice also, uh, this is a nonlinear system uh, where we're just looking at the coefficient. So, but what is the great news about this is there, there is an elastic, a uh, non-electrical Jacobian that exists that we can find. So we can easily linearize the system at each operations point that we want. Uh, so we will see later on why it is very useful to have defined um, the, the, the Jacobian. Uh, so all these equations that you're seeing there are from the, a book called uh, Guidance and Control of Ocean PQ. So if you're interested uh, to learn more about uh, the system model of a, of a or AUV or any marine vehicle, I definitely, uh, definitely uh, suggest to look at it up. All right, so before jumping, uh, um, before jumping into the MPC section part, I just want to know if, if there are any questions so far. So how do right. you use the CSE simulation? Sorry? Oh, how are the uh, CSE, the uh, uh, food uh, simulations done? How, how how we do how we do the code of, of this? Uh, sorry, I, I have oh, difficulty oh, hearing you. Oh, sorry, of the fluid dynamics, the CFD simulations. Yeah, so uh, I'm not I'm not an expert on how the fluid dynamic is done. I'm not the guy that's working on it, but for, for sure, what well, the only thing the part I, I am is that you know I took the result and then I added it to the model. But I'm not the the person that directly do the. Uh, I think this is an ANSYS. So uh, personally, I don't know how, how, how answers work, but uh, I can, you know, refer to the people that have working on it. I don't know if that answered your question. That's great, thank you. Okay. Uh, any question before uh, moving on? Alex, it doesn't look like there's anything in the chat, so I think we can, we can keep moving. Okay, but I, I don't see the chat because uh, you know yeah. I'm sharing yeah. my presentation full screen. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you there's something in the chat. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'll continue. All right, so now we are talking about you know, the system model. Now we're gonna go and talk about what an adaptive NPC controller is. So start off NPC for model predictive control is very, it's, it, it's an optimal uh, control technique that is very powerful for controlling uh, complex uh, system dynamics. So it is a multi-input, multi-output controller. So it is useful to because we can design only one controller for the entire system, compare, for example, the PIDs where we have to design one controller for every state that we want to control. Uh, so the main idea behind an MPC controller is that it will use a prediction model to forecast the, predict the, uh, the behavior of a system over a short period of time in the future. And since we can make those predictions, we can run an optimization on the input such as it can bring the system closer to the desired target that we want it to be. Uh, so for sure, we can linear, we can apply, uh, sorry, we can optimize uh, directly the nonlinear system. But the issue with that is that it took a lot and a lot of processing powers. And, you know, when we're talking about embedded systems, so in our case, we're using a NVIDIA Jetson Xavier, uh, it is not a, a viable solution because the computer, the computer isn't strong enough to uh, run those optimization at the, sample, at the sample time that we want it to be. And also we, there's different software that we want to run on the AUV at the same time. So we really want to have a controller that took a decent amount of processing powers. Uh, good for us, there is a, there's a technique that we can use to reduce the processing power, and it's technically to linearize the system at the operation, at the operation point for each sample time. So this is why we, it is useful to have the Jacobian defined, as now we can linearize the system and then apply the, the optimization on a linear model, which is way more faster to do and viable for embedded system. The only thing that we must to ensure is that the model must be non-highly 
uh, linear because we want that the linear approximation is accurate over all the prediction horizon. So when we do the forecast, one that the linear the linear approximation is good enough for application. And as we say, since we have since we have a um, already defined the Jacobian, it is very quick to generate those uh, model uh, linearization. So as we when we compare the the you know the resource consumption of the adaptive NPC and the traditional linear NPC controller, they're both they're both similar and use the same amount of resource power. So if we just move to the graph a little bit, I'll just uh, try to synthesize everything I said. So let's say we are with the current step. So first thing we want to do we want to linearize the systems at the operation point, which in that case is the current state of the system. And then what we got to do is we go into the optimization prediction sequence. So what the controller do is this, it, it try to find a, a, a use or input command and just look how the system will behave based on the input command it said, uh, it defined. And we have a cost function, right? To find the best, uh, the best command possible. And the cost function is where the MPC gains uh, comes in. So there's different MPC gains that you can look and see from the MATLAB documentation, but just in a nutshell, so there's gains that, so you can weight uh, where, which states are more important than the other. So you can say, all right, uh, I want to stabilize the row, example, over the Y position or something. And you can also uh, find a compromise between, you know, the performance of the system itself and the energy consumption. Because I think for RoboSub is the case, and I'm probably sure for uh, RoboBoat and RoboX also, but we are running on batteries, right? So the energy consumption is is a matter. So because we want to have like the better autonomy possible, so it is the cost function is very a nice way to really uh, find a sweet spot between like like I said the performance of the system and the energy saving. Uh, and also a cool thing about the MPC controller into MATLAB, that since it uses a numerical uh, optimization technique, we can add constraints into the system. So you can add constraints, for example, onto the input. So that's very useful because you can you can directly set the limit of the thruster. So let's say I don't want my thruster to go over that range at that range. Well, you can already uh, define them into the optimization, such as the controller won't output something that is not feasible for the thrusters. But a thing also interesting is that you can define a you can define a constraint into the state itself. So let's say for any reason you don't want the AUV to go deeper than five meters. Well, you can set a constraint that say, well, Z needs to be lower than five, and then the control and then the controller won't let the AUV go deeper than five meters. So I just want so that's the point about the adaptive MPC controller. So before moving on, is there any question regardless uh, the MPC controller? If no, I'll just go ahead and jump. All right. So now we are talking about system dynamics. We are talking about MPC controllers. So how do we integrate those concepts into our control uh, architect uh, into sorry our software architecture? So here is there's a graph or our control uh, algorithm. So we are mainly using ROS uh, to communicate between each node. So as you can see, we have all those arrow uh, with the ROS topic that we have. So if we start off, we have what we call our sensor acquisition layer. So basically what that layer does is just each node communicate directly with its own sensor and just uh, publish a ROS message containing the measurement of that sensors. Uh, when we have all the information of all the sensors, uh, we have what we call our PUCNAV, which is our sensor fusion and state efficient. So it takes all the information of the sensor and just estimate the state of the system. After that, we have our PUC control. So this is where the controller is. So our MPC controller sits in that particular space. So like I said, it took the estimated state and the input trajectory. So it will um, but so it will be able to generate the the, the input command in that case U which could be sent directly to the thruster using our actuator driver uh, layer. Uh, as you can see where we are running uh, into our laptop, so we're gonna show that uh, later on, uh, we have our simulation layer that we can use. So we have a Unity simulation. So we, we, have, we have a 3D model of the entire competition environment so we, can, so we can test our admission system and control. So first of all, we have our proc simulation, which is the system model that you see Earlier, so that dynamic equation, we just add, you know, a disturbance to modeling the waves and the drift that the water will do. 
uh, we also simulate our sensor. So we know the sensors, uh, we, we model like behavior that the sensor will have. So the goal of Puck is to be closest to how the real um, submarine will run into the water. So what that solution, what this simulation will output is just a, you know, where it's just the pose of the vehicle and the UDT will just show into the 3D environment how the, the um, sorry, how the, the vehicle will behave. So how do you interact with this, with our control system, right? So, cause now I'll just talk about the flow, but how, how does it work for moving the AV? So there's two ways to move the, the, the vehicle, which first is using our, our mission system, but we also have our telemetry that we can send pose to the vehicle. So basically when we say, okay, I want to go deep, I want to let's say go forward by meters. Well, you just send a, a waypoint that says a meter away. And we have our trajectory generator that will automatically generate a spline so that the trajectory, so that the controller will always have a smooth trajectory to uh, to follow. Uh, we never send like a unit trajectory as well. So we never say oh, zero, then go a meter forward. We always try to have like the smoothest trajectory possible. All right, so what, so how the work for, how, sorry. Uh, so how the workflows work and how we are using MATLAB. So there, there's two parts of it. I'll start with the left. So the left is how we, we took the, those equations and we, we are deploying them into the AUV. So first of all, you, you have to see the textbook equation. So what we do is we are coding them using the symbolic toolbox of MATLAB that we are able to, after that, generate MATLAB code that could be loaded into Simulink. So as we have our system model and all our, uh, our model, uh, all, sorry, that we have the code of the model and uh, we have our Simulink model and everything works, now we can use the embedded coder to generate the C++ code of, of our Simulink model. And once we have that, we can just create our ROS package. Uh, in our case, we also uh, use Docker. So we just build the, um, the Docker image. And at the end, what we just do is we just download that images into our AUV or on our laptop to get ready to run. So that's like the main idea of workflow. So how we get into the, you know, the textbook equation to the entire AUV. But what is, from my perspective, one of the main advantage of using uh, MATLAB for troubleshooting the control system uh, is really when you debug um, the controller uh, in the pool. So just um, a quick, uh, so just uh, just a quick story, uh, real quick. So uh, here uh, at Sonia, at, at ETS, we don't we we doesn't have a pool. So each time we want to have a pool test, we need to. Uh, manage to find a pool uh, into the local area and those pool tests could cost well they're quite expensive actually so let's say we have a six hour frame uh, Sunday night uh, so we have six hours to test our system and what was the problem in the past is that each time you know you want to change something so let's say you you run your code you see how the system behave or you're not happy you want to change something so now you have to stop everything and you change the code you need to recompile you need to redeploy that other stuff or even if, if you're using docker you need to build the docker image then you need to download that docker image into the auv but you know you're in the pool where the network is always bad so it's always long to download the image blah 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 so it's always uh, not efficient the way we were working to testing the, 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 the controller because we waste a lot of time between, between testing. So a cool thing about MATLAB is about Simlink also, it's what they call desktop prototyping. So as you may know, there's ROS block right into Simlink. So as you press play into the Simlink environment, what it actually does, it, it, just, it just starts a ROS node uh, using Simlink. So when I press start, what actually happens is just I run the controller node into my laptop, but since I'm connected to the to the AUV itself, as I press start into Simlink, the physical uh, AUV move at the same time. So for that, each time I want to change something, the only thing I have to do is just press stop, change something, press start again, wait 10 to 15 seconds, just to wait, just let it time to rebuild the Simlink model, and then we can try again. So it's very more efficient to test or in pool when we have you know a limited time, uh, limited testing times, so we we can do this process over and over, and then when we are uh, happy with the result of how we have designed the AUV, now we can gener generate the C++ code that we can deploy on the AUV. So 
I think from now on, what we can do uh, is just want to know if there are any questions before going into uh, MATLAB and Simlink. All right. I think I just need to change my uh, screen, my screen recording. In the meantime, it looks like you have one. Because yeah, right now you 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 only you only see the the, the, the presentation. I'll I'll swap to my entire screen. Yeah, Alex, there's a question in the in the in the chat about are there any compatibility or versioning issues with ROS to Humble? Um, I can. Uh, I, yeah, from my perspective, I I know when because we never experienced ROS to at that point, but. What what I know when you have the ROS toolbox and two symlink, let's say you have the ROS message subscriber, ROS publisher from ROS one, and then you have the exact same block for ROS two. And from what MATLAB said is you can just swap those blocks together and, and it will be ROS two compatible, but I haven't tested out myself. But it's this is something that we will have to do uh, pretty much soon. Yeah, Justin, I, 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 I can I can take a look at my internal systems to see what our support for ROS2 Humble is. Um, if you could just give me a second. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get my full screen. All right. I got my presentation over there. Uh, I got my MATLAB open. So maybe we can just jump off and go directly to our Simic model. So on the top of review this is the the model that we are using so if you remember we have our so this is our state estimation this is our control layer and we have our simulation over there and on the on the on the yellow part this is the ROS message just to interact with the system because something we have to know is that when, when we are generating the when we are generating the code we lost the ui of stimulus so we need to be able to interact with the system without stimulus itself so maybe for what Ross two is saying, I can, I can uh, just go ahead. Uh, I don't know for a while. So uh, Ross, if I look at the the library, it's just way too open. But from there, there's Ross, right? So you got Ross one block. So let's say we got the blank message, you get parameters, the right images subscriber, and then on Ross two, you get pretty much the same block, but for ROS2 instead. So the way it works, so at the first beginning here, this is where we, we, we are getting the data from the sensor. So if we're running on the real system, so we, we just subscribe to every uh, sensor that we have, so the IBU, the DDL, and our depth sensors. And from now on, this is where we estimated uh, our, our state. So this is where our, our common filter is sit on. And then after that, we have our trajectory generator. I won't, I won't uh, pass too much time on this, but what uh, interests us a lot is the controller system. So from there, our MPC, or our adaptive MPC controller is set right there. So uh, the way it works, so we have our trim plant uh, block. So we, we use a lot of custom of uh, what they call it's a, it's a MATLAB system. So you can, you can define your own MATLAB blocks. Uh, so it's very useful when you want to uh, optimize your simulant design. So the trim plant block, what actually does is the block that will linearize the system. So it took the the input system, so the op, so sorry, the um, it took the operation point and will generate our our linear matrices that we can feed directly into our MPC controller. And we also have, like we said, the constraint of our um, of uh, of our of the optimization problem. So we, we as we say, we can define boundaries of our thrusters and on our on our state itself so this is where you can define those and you can change it on you can change it real time so a quick uh, a quick story about how this is, is very useful uh, we have a uh, we have made a, a, a local competition here in quebec with uh, mcgill university and uh, ufta and what happened at that competition is one of our um, truster died so i think it was a depth truster uh, it, it just was just fried up so uh, it was an issue because we, we lost the motor, but we know that we have eight motors on the AUV and minimally we need at least six motors to run on this on the system. So what we do is we just took the um, the uh, we just took the um, right the the boundaries of the of the truster number five and said, hey, instead of having let's say a 
40 newtons to minus 20 newtons. Let's say you have zero newtons for each side. So what that does is just disable the thrusters and then the MPC controller were able to run with seven thrusters instead of eight. And we didn't lose so much time just to adapt it. So if you if you want to able like a dynamic fault system recognition to, to detect when a thruster fails, you can easily uh, update the MPC controller and say, hey, that thruster dies, so don't use it anymore. Um, so that's how about the adaptive MPC work. Um, and then, so here's the raw state. So this is where we're sending like our thrusters uh, PWM signal. So for for the uh, for the telemetry. And lastly, what's cool? We have our physics model system here. So this is where we are simulating the uh, the system model of the AED. So as you can see, we didn't use the uh, aerospace block tool set because, well, we only have to find the equation for the NPC controller, so we just use it again. And as we can see, we, we, we have our wave perturbation over there, and this is our sensor model over there, so we can add noise, we can set, for example, our DVL, we know that the DVL, when the attitude of the vehicle, so the roll and pitch angle gets over 20 degrees, the sensor don't work anymore and stop sending data. So this is something that we took into account into our system modelization. And at the end, we have our simulation output. So uh, we used to send the position to Unity, and well, we were using Gazebo uh, at this at uh, at some point, but we still be able to um, send the position. So what's cool about Simlink is that we don't use the Unity or Gazebo physics engine. We really use MATLAB to uh, sorry, we really use Simlink to generate all the physics uh, of of the vehicle dynamics. So I think we can just go ahead and see. Uh, how it performs. So let's say we have our system, right? And we're happy with it. Uh, the way to generate the code is when, once you have embedded code over there, so you got this C++ code. Uh, personally, the, the way I, the way I, <laughs> the button I prefer is not the generated codes, even if it's like big and, and do it is to click. The one I prefer is just share and generate code and package. So, because well, that does just generate a, a folder with all the code, but I always prefer to have a, a zip with all the dependency and stuff over there. So, but personally, I prefer to generate code and package. So that's the way. I won't click on it because you know, generate the code will take. Um, it took around like 10 to 15 minutes, and then compile it again it's like another five minutes. But I have uh, I have already uh, compiled the controller in my system, so. As, as you can notice, we are running um, we are running everything into Docker. So the only thing I could do is just launch our our system. So I just relaunching the local. I'm just launching the local um, version of the of the AUV. And now the other thing I could start is we can start our Simulation. So we have built a Unity simulation of our systems. So as we can see from there, we so this is like a pre-qualification uh, thing. So we see the gate, we see the pole, and as you can see from the right, we have the course obstacle of uh, RoboSet 2022 over there. So this is very useful for testing our mission offline because as you, as, as as I mentioned earlier, we didn't have a lot of pool testing because it's hard to find. Uh, Pool in time, and they also cost a lot of money, so we can't just have a lot of pool testing. So one of the main reasons we're using Unity instead of, uh, let's say, Gazebo, is that well, in Unity, there's the vision team that put a lot of effort to modeling the camera of, um, you know, modeling the, the, the camera and the water effect, if you want, uh, of the of the dynamics. So we can actually train and. Uh, test out our AI perception and our conventional vision system into uh, the simulation. So, right, next thing I'll do real quick, I'll just pop off our uh, our telemetry. So uh, this is, like I said, the interface to to start uh, the, the system. So what I want to do, like a demonstration, so you, you'll you see the pre-qualification that we showed, and then I just want to show that it is, it is pretty, uh, Easy to just replicate that trajectory into um, into our simulation. So right now, sorry, I don't uh, <laughs> already uh, uh, write the command. So this is a uh, raw sponge. So 
So we use FlexB as our as our system, as our uh, behavior system. And then I just realized I need to shut down my telemetry real quick because I didn't define the. So I want to. I don't want to tell too much about our our telemetry system. So this is where we we can um, we we can interact with our simulation. So as of right now, you see the AUV doesn't well do nothing. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to start the simulation. So as we start the simulation, we see that the controller isn't working. We're just simulating the the disturbance of the system, so the wave and et cetera. And as I turn the controller, now we'll see we get a more steady. Uh, we can also notice that the thruster are are turning, so we we know that the controller is working. And then the last thing that we want to do is this is basically the same thing that we do in pool when we are testing. So we just want to load our behavior. So in our case, if we, let's say we want to run our pre-qualification behavior. So we have all the behavior that we are running at RoboSub last year. So I'm just looking into P pre-qualification. Where is it? How's that right there? So as I can see, it's ready to execute. So I could just start the execution of the system and then so we can see it's it just starting, sending all the push and register, and it generates the trajectory into our simulation. So as of right now, we will see that the well, the path is generated into our simulation system, and then we can just see the AUV uh, performing that trajectory. So seeing the tool set is very uh, useful, we, so because we can easily see how off we are from our system. Maybe I should go a little bit. Uh, could go a little bit uh, easier, uh, faster, just to don't waste a lot of time. So that's the mean what I can see. So you can see that the AUV move into x, x, size, uh, x and y axis. We are also going a little bit upper. So the AUV is uh, going up a little bit at the same time. And and as you can see, we we try to get uh, tangent to to the trajectory. So we're, uh, we're sorry, we are moving uh, four degrees of freedom at the same time. So that was our, our main goal to, uh, for our system because we say, hey, if we're able to execute that trajectory, uh, I won't bother of what the mission guy could, will be capable of. I say, hey, if the AUV can do such a thing, then we're, we're pretty much uh, good for uh, you know every uh, trajectory that is needed for the RoboSub competition. So as you can see, we're just moving back through the gates. Then we'll just well, we'll just finish it real quick. So as, as the AUV goes to its trajectory, uh, the controller have what they call its target reach uh, system. So that, that tell the mission system when the, the trajectory is over. And in our case, when the, when the trajectory is over, what we do is that we just kill the AUV. And that's it. So that is our pre-qualification uh, be, behavior that we ran. So let's see, we've got uh, no execution. We've got, sorry, exit finish with result finish. So that's the exact uh, behavior and the exact workflow. The workflow that I, that I use and that we, we do on the AUV is the same. The only difference is that we press the physical button on the AUV instead of right now, I just uh, force it with a, with a software click. So yeah, that's it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know if uh, you people want to see something else into our control system. I think it'd be time for questions. Or if 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 people want it uh, to go deeper until each uh, uh, section of the of either MATLAB simulation, or if people just want to try something on the simulation, I think we're open for some uh, question and interaction. So Justin has a question asking what if you had to write code for your sensor fusion slash uh, common filter algorithm or was there or was there a simulating block for it no uh, there's there's a there's a simulating block for um or I, I, can, I can show it real quick um, oh, well, we're, we're drifting a bit yeah but yeah there, there's there's a, we use an extended camel filter so as the same way that an mpc the adaptive mpc work is just we we have a nonlinear system we linearize that system 
and we use the traditional camel filter based on the linear system. So yeah, there, there's what, what they call a extended camel filter or ETF that you can use. So you, you can define our model and your, uh, sorry, your output measurement uh, function, and you can easily implement those into, uh, into Simlink. Yeah, Justin, so, uh, there's a, maybe I can uh, just... Uh, uh, there's okay, a whole sure, toolbox sure. for that. So yeah. you, we've got something called the sensor fusion and tracking toolbox, which has um, both simulating blocks as well as as well as like MATLAB functions that you can um, uh, you can use for EKFs mm -hmm. and uh, so on and so forth. One um, I can show real quick. So that that is our our, yeah. our Kalman filter block. So you see we have our we have our input system. We and we have the measurement of the system. So people have, for people were there at Robosa when we, when we put our AUV tilt, what happened is that we lost our DVL, right? So when there's no DVL, the last thing you want to do is stop feeding a control system because what happened, it will, it will figure it out that, well, you can change the output and the input and the output doesn't change and when a weird thing try to, sorry, this is when weird thing happens. So what you want to do with the Kalman filter is, well, if you have no DVL, just use the system model to you know, compute those velocities. So there's no measure, only use, um, we only use a state estimation. So yeah, for sure we will drift and the accuracy won't be as a real DVL do, but you know, it won't crash the system. And that's just how we were able to uh, tilt the AUV upward. So for this, I can show it real quick. So has, let's say I turn the controller, I, I drift a bit, I'm in the middle of the pool. So let's say I drop two meters away. So I can send waypoints to our system. And I can move the vehicle down. And let's say I turn the vehicle uh, 90 degree uphill. So as it turns, you will see that the vehicle, well, it stay it stay, uh, it stay steady, but we will tend to drift a bit. And the reason it will tend to drift is that we doesn't have uh, the, the information of our DVL anymore. So we only rely on the state estimation. So we won't take the disturbance of the wave into the account. But at least as we can see, we're able to stay steady and for, for, for the way of the, uh, how, how does it call the, the trick shot, we're able, to, we're able to stay still also, only using the state estimation. All right, so I think we, we can jump into, go back in the presentation and show um, the, last, the last demo that we have with uh, the key takeaways. Um, so for people that we were there at RoboSub 2022, we, uh, or, or they see that the, the style point that we do, what we actually do, we do a core 360. So if you are the kind of people that ski, you know what this is, but for uh, just a bit of context, uh, a course is when you, you go up, Hill and you, you turn, you, you make like a, a wheel of the AUV and you turn. So I have a snapshot uh, of our semifinal run at the competition. So where we show that, uh, that, that uh, sorry, that the, the vehicle doing. So as you can see, we're able to stay uphill. So at that point, no DVL, only using the state estimation for the X and Y position. And you'll notice as we turn, we, we, we start the trick shot a little bit too close to the gate. So we actually tip the gate at the moment that we, that we turn. And that's what is cool about this is even if there's a lot of disturbance, right? So we actually hitting the gate at the time we're doing the trick shot. Well, the AUV is still capable to maintain its current trajectory even, even there's a high, um, even there's a high disturbance uh, going on uh, into the system. All right, so some key takeaways uh, uh, to the presentation. So first of all, uh, we know that you know modeling the AUV dynamic is quite challenging for model-based controller. But what's good for us is that MATLAB symbolic to box simplify a lot the, the textbook equation and uh, using Simlink to generate the code is very help, it really helps us out doing so. And MATLAB embedded coder also what because it's very awesome that <laughs> you can. You can wrote textbook equation doing your math and when you're happy with it, you can generate our C++ application. And what's cool is that you didn't have to rewrite your code each time because you know, when, when you are working in C++, you just modify your thing always and always. It's always a lot of, uh, of um, you know, rewriting code. And I mean, for Sonia, you know, we, uh, we are um, 
you know, we're doing this on our on our part time. This is not an uh, actual job that we're doing. And even though we are working for Teddy Controller, we always do a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, at the club, just you know, to on different tasks. But what's really cool about MATLAB is it really shortens the development time uh, required to develop a, such of a complex system like uh, the controller that we should. So yeah, so that's what the presentation for today. Is there any question more or some thoughts or something or people have any more questions? I can just stop, I will let the presentation on. I don't think there are any more questions in the chat. Thank you, that was awesome. I am not a computer person and I feel like I learned something <laughs> a lot, so. Yeah. Hope you do. <laughs> um, and just a reminder for the folks joining us, um, Robo Nation teams, whether you're a part of Robo Sub, um, like Team Sonia or Robot X, Robo Boat, any of our competitions and programs at Robo Nation. Uh, MathWorks is a Robo Nation sponsor, and as such, all of our teams um, can get complimentary MathWorks software. And you can find it at the link that I just uh, dropped oh, in. There we go. I, <laughs> <can't help> <laughs> I hate to say it, but jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you will get a similar link with the sponsor use at the top corner saying that you're using a similar yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a sponsor license. Yeah, and it's 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 got it's got all of these products of all the products that they have uh, that um, Alex has shown. Um, uh, so and, and plus a whole lot more. So it's essentially everything you need uh, to 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 design a robot. Um, so uh, Alex, there, 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 there's another question in the chat. Uh, it says, yep. do you use a data-driven approach for getting parameters for your state model? Uh, we, 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 we try such things, but the, 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 just for a bit of context, we were designing the UV during the pandemic. And here in Canada, it was kind of crazy thing going on. And we didn't have access to our facilities for like a year and a half or so. So we, we really used more a empirical approach or a theoretical approach just for the sake that we didn't have our vehicle in hand or we didn't. Uh, be able to go in the pool at that time. So for example, uh, one of the easiest way for say to find like the weight, the volume, the center of mass of the inertia, uh, we're using SolidWorks. Um, yep. We are using SolidWorks to calculate those things. So what you can do is next time you disable yourselves, just wait, it's, it's a long job to do, but it's very uh, useful and I recommend it to do, to do it. So just wait every component that you have. And then into our SolidWorks model, let's say, whatever each uh, CAD software you use, but you can override the weight of, of the part that you have. You can say, all right, so I got this crazy part and the weight is, oh, so it's like two kilograms. You override that mass, so you say two kilograms. So you do that for all your parts. And what you can do is that most often, I, I, I talk for SolidWorks, but I know most of CAD software, you can, you know, they can generate the center of mass and the inertia and the value of your system. So this is really a good base to do it. So, because when we are entering all the mass uh, of our system, we don't go crazy and modeling and weight all, let's say the cable of the systems. But a cool thing you can do to just validate that your 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 your, your CAD model is good enough is then it will compute the, 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 the mass of your system. So let's say our AUV is 33 kilograms or so. And then we you can easily weight the actual system. So, oh, all right. So instead of 33 kilograms, 32.4, so yeah, fair enough, good approximation. So you can easily use the center of mass, the, the inertia tensor, and the volume of the system. But uh, this is something that we want to do later on because I know there's like MATLAB also, I, I didn't look at it, maybe Connell can answer more, but I looked about the gray box uh, yeah. uh, technique to identify those systems. So that is where yeah. we were able to do, but since the, the control system was decent enough, we, we didn't go deeper into this, but. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've actually. Uh, oh, go, 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 go ahead, Alex. <laughs> Sorry about uh, that. Well, well, I'm not an expert about it, just read a bit. Yeah. So technically it's, it's, it's like a black box, but instead of just find everything, you can just give a system model and say, hey, I need those parameters. And then right. I have record the input of the system. And then this is the, the output that I measure and find those constants. This is something I know that could be done, but we yeah. personally didn't uh, do it. Yeah, I, I've I've popped a link to 
a video series on system identification, which is the process that that Alex was just was just describing. So there are essentially what you do is you 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 put your submarine in the water, give it like a a reference input, if you will. So it's like kind of like a step, or, or actually you 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 don't want to do a step input. You want to do something that can excite as much of the frequencies of your of your system as possible, right? So so some kind of sinusoidal wave or like a chirp signal, uh, and then you you essentially feed that into your into your into your system and have it drive around and collect the output. So you could you could think of think of it like okay, if your 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 chirp signal is like thruster thruster input and your output is like GPS, you know, or or or, or IMU position or something like that, um, and essentially you you. Uh, you, you put it through the the, the system identification app, um, so, so so that's what they call black box modeling. But but, but there, there there is an in between uh, call, called called gray box modeling, which is where you kind of know the system, but you don't know the parameters, and then you can um, say Sibling has a bunch of tools for that. So I, I I've, I've popped in a link to the series. Um, you can check that out. It talks about all of those different systems and and some tools that you can use for it. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, perfect. And maybe one last thing that we can show is that uh, we can share is that you know Sonia is a complete it's a completely open source um, project. So if you want to go ahead and download every Sonia code, you can. So what I was showing today is what they call the control library. So you know using MATLAB. So if you want, go ahead and uh, see uh, the Simic model and the project for yourself. Uh, I could put a link into the the chat, but you can download the Simic model there see if it fits for your need or something or get based on to do something on your side. So we're really an uh, open source and we don't, we don't uh, hide anything. I can just put the link into, I can put, I don't see the, I can maybe that I put uh, So I just shared the link of our Sonia Revo. Awesome. All righty. I, I think that's- I people from a, uh, uh, go ahead. I'll, no, I'll go, no, I, I, Alex, I'll see you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep, I'll, keep cutting you I'll off. just say, I see, I see Robo sub teams um, in, the, in the chat and I'm just wondering if anything go good so far. Are they prepared for, for Robo sub this year? <laughs> Is there, just, just talk a bit. I don't know, I, I don't force the, any, anyone to do something. If anyone wants to speak up, now's a good time. We also, um, for those of you who are not aware, we'll, we are moving from moving to Discord. Um, we've had some folks helping us, um, so can keep the conversation going. You all can stay connected on Discord. You can also um, email us at autonomy at RoboNation um, at any time. If you have questions, we're happy to connect you to each other or to um, anyone specific that you have questions for. So just play, pulling that up right now. Um, and want to, again, thank Connell and Alexander for, for your amazing presentation. Uh, we do have a few minutes left. So if anyone has questions, please do feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, Mabel from Team Inspiration says we're currently doing okay on our electrical and mechanical design, but we are a bit behind on software. So I think this <laughs> probably will help them. Um, and it's and always the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so please, please make sure to um, get on Discord, stay connected. It is definitely where um, our folks, as you all who have been to competition in person know how much sharing happens and how teams um, like Team Sonia are incredibly generous and, and open sourced with their information. You can do a lot of um, a lot of that same conversation on Discord and amongst yourselves there. So I do encourage you all to, to join the groups. Um, Justin says we're a little behind as well, currently just experimenting with a PID with our new robot, might port, port over our LQR, but ultimate goal is to switch to MPC. So um, Justin, you had a lot of questions yeah, today, so hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Mm -hmm. and please do make sure you connect with Connell um, for any additional questions. Yeah, reach out. Uh, happy to, happy to mm -hmm. answer any questions. 
Thank you. And Juliana says, um, and if you're on Discord, you'll be the first to see the news of where and when um, RoboSub will be. There will be an announcement going out very soon. So if that's not enough motivation to get you all on Discord, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you all so much for joining us. We'll stay on if there's a couple of last minute questions. Otherwise, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye, right, guys. Bye-bye.